Great. So good evening again to, I welcome everyone to the general body meeting for uh, November for Community Board 2. For those of you who have an agenda in front of you, that's what we'll be following this evening. I am Lenny Singletary. I serve as chairperson as Community Board 2. Our vice chairs are Mr. Leonard Jordan and Ms. Barbara Zala-Gringer. Our secretary is Ms. Jessica Thurston. Um, and then for the first time in public, our district manager is Taya Mala. So that is the leadership and the setup of Community Board 2. And for all of you who are new to the Community Board, all that activity was really because we're finally over. It has nothing to do with Taya. Uh -huh. <laughs> I want to thank everyone who came out and participated and made the commitment to help us go through the official business of Community Board 2 pursuant to our bylaws so that we could select the district manager. And Taya, congratulations. So with that, um, that is the introduction of the leadership for Community Board 2. Uh, I'll take a minute to remind everyone that this meeting is being recorded and that is custom with the way we engage at Community Board 2. Feel free if you have questions as we're having discussion to include them in the chat, we'll maintain them. Uh, for board members, as is the custom, raise your hand either virtually or physically, and, and we will then um, call upon you for questions. Again, for board members only. And then for members of the community, um, at the very end, we set aside time where only members of the community get a chance to have items that are brought to the attention of community board for things that you would like for us to address, perhaps that have been discussed during the meeting. So with that, um, I'll move on to the next item. Can I get uh, an approval to adopt tonight's agenda? Ms. Feibush, second, Ms. Zollegringer. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, either raise your hand or indicate aye. Is there anyone who is opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, great. So I remind everyone who's raising their hands and using the functions virtually that once you raise your hand, take it down so there's no confusion. Next item on the agenda is the adoption of the previous minutes. Has everyone had a chance to review the previous minutes? Are there any corrections? If should you have any corrections, I'd ask that you submit them to the board office and we'll coordinate with the secretary to get the corrections and modifications noted. Approval to adopt the minutes. Uh, Mr. Jordan, can I get a second? Ms. Thurston, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Anyone opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. Uh, the next item on our agenda is the um, open session for public comment to speak on the adopted items. Should anyone who is not a member of Community Board 2 have an item that they'd like us to consider in relationship to the agenda, um, now is the time to do so. And let me start with Eric. Eric, if you would, could you just identify your affiliation and then uh, let us know what your topic is for this evening? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Eric Vath. I'm a partner with Goldman Harris. I'm here to speak briefly on behalf of the applicant for 43 Clark Street. Uh, that's an amendment for, of an existing gym variance to allow a new operator and new hours. Oh, so let, let me just interrupt you for a minute. You actually get a speaking part <laughs> because you, you, when we get to that topic, because you're representing the applicant, you will be the one that's on Broadway. Lights are coming oh, in. It'll be terrific. Great. So All I'm right. glad, you, glad you did that. You got early preparation for your script, but hold tight, hold tight. We're coming back to you for a minute. Thank you. Sure. Is there anyone who is not representing someone on the agenda and whose other community has an item that they want us to um, consider for tonight's meeting? Just give me a second. Let me scroll over one other screen to make sure I'm not missing anyone. Okay, great. So seeing that we have no modifications, we'll continue with the agenda. And with that, let me turn over to item number five nomination slate of board officers for calendar year 2023. And I'm going to turn it over to Mr. John Quinn. Thank you, Lenny. Uh, good evening, everyone. As you saw in the notice you received, 
uh, or that you were linked to uh, when the agenda and the, and the items went out. And as I announced at the last meeting, uh, last general meeting in October, this is the time when we uh, move forward on electing our officers for next year. Um, the election is in December, but the election, but the action in December is only to vote. There's no nominations allowed in December. Tonight is the night for nominations. The, uh, the nominating committee, which was formed by the chair, Brandon Smith is the uh, chair, I'm the co-chair. Um, we, our function, as I think I put in the, in the, it was in the memo, the notice out to you is we sort of are in between the present officers and the board, uh, the entire membership so that the, the present incumbents, if they're running, don't get involved in electing next year's slate. So as you saw, we sent out a notice, everybody was there, anybody who wanted to run was uh, instructed to contact Brandon or myself for any member of the committee. We now know who the nominees are and what I will do is I'm gonna do them in the order of uh, precedence, of starting with the chair. I'll tell you who the nominees are. I'll open the floor for any new nominations. And I remind you that if you wanna run, you can nominate yourself. If you're gonna nominate somebody else, which is allowed, that person better be here and better accept because if we don't know they intend to run, we're not gonna put their name on the ballot. So with that as prelude, for uh, the office of chair, we only have one nomination and that's the incumbent, uh, Lanou Singletary. And I'll open the floor. Are there any other nominations for the office of chair? And I, I'm on an iPad. I can only see myself and, and uh, uh, what is it? 11 of my other closest friends. So Jessica, anybody else who sees somebody else? Hi. I don't, but use the raise hand feature, folks, if you do. If anybody wants to run, raise your hand. Seeing none, I will uh, entertain, or I'll make the motion, you know, when we do it, when we're sitting around, when we're all in a room together, it's much quicker. I will just say that there's now a motion on the floor to close nominations. All in favor, please raise your hand, physically or electronically. And um, so nominations are closed for chair. For first vice chair, we have only one nomination and that's the incumbent Leonard Jordan. And I open the floor to, uh, by raising by raising of hands or calling out or an electronic hand or if there are any other nominations for first vice chair. Knowing, hearing none and not being told there are any others, I'll make the motion to close nominations all in favor. Raise your hand electronically or not. Uh, nominations are closed. For second vice chair, we have two nominees. One is our, our incumbent, Barbara Zeller Gringer, and we also have a nomination by Melinda Rasco. So we have two candidates. I will come back to that. Well, first I'll open the floor for any other nominations for second vice chair. Ms. Williams, your electronic hand is raised. Are you raising it to suggest a name? Cheryl Williams. Okay. <laughs> you put her hand down. Sorry. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Just for training. Okay, cool. No, no harm, no foul. Uh, well, to, to everyone who's voted tonight, we're not as sophisticated as the Board of Elections. So you bear with us, we'll bear with you. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is only the second most important election uh, in, November, in this week of uh, November. Um, seeing no other nominees, I'll, I'll move that we close the nominations and all in favor. Say aye, raise your hand, don't have to say aye. Raise your hand or raise, physically or electronically. Nominations are closed for that. Uh, for the Office of Secretary, we only have one nominee and that's our incumbent, Jessica Thurston. Uh, and uh, are there any other nominees, any other nominations? for secretary of the board. Hearing and seeing being told of none. Unfortunately, Jessica, uh, <laughs> we, uh, I'll, I'll make the motion to close nominations. All in favor of closing nominations, 
please raise your hand or electronically or otherwise. Okay, so we have two candidates for vice chair. The rules provide, uh, since you all are gonna have to vote in December, the rules provide that we give an opportunity to each of the candidates to give, uh, to uh, campaign as it were, to give a speech on behalf of their nomination. And then we, we will open the floor after those two have spoken for any questions that any board members might have uh, because this is really uh, the only official time that uh, we will gather before there will be a vote in December. So uh, let's do it. I guess we'll do it in alphabetical order. I'm not gonna flip a coin. Okay. So just, just uh, can I, I interrupt for a second? I, I apologize since I didn't know this was gonna happen. Can you give me a minute to step away for a moment and come back? Sure, sure. Before we're gonna, we start. Because we're gonna do Ms. Rath okay, let's well, all right. Well, that's that's up to the chair. Can we take that break, Lenny, for a moment? Well, given that you were going to do well, it, go, go ahead, Barbara, Barbara has the opportunity to step away because I think the other candidate is first alphabetically, if I'm not correct. Yeah, I'm going to have, yeah. But I, I would, right. well, can I step away then after she speaks? This is your opportunity to step away now, if you'd like. Okay. Go ahead. May I also just ask a quick uh, process question? After the yeah. questions of the two candidates, will we have a a closed like discussion or well, how? No. Well, no, we're going. There's going to be an open. We'll, we'll, okay. The candidates will speak, and then there'll be a question and answer period. So any members of the board can ask a question, or okay. I guess you can make a statement in the form of a question. That's uh, okay. you know th th that's the traditional way that it's done. But we're going to open it. It's been for, a while, so I wanted um, to ask. <laughs> okay, Mr. Quinn. Questions I'm and sorry. answers. Yeah. I have a question for you because it has been a while. Um, the yeah. question and answer period is only tonight. Is there an opportunity to do that at the beginning of the December meeting? Well, I guess we could if, if uh, yeah, I, you know, there's, there's no reason not. The idea is that, uh, and I remind everybody that uh, we haven't figured out because I don't know if we're going to be remote or hybrid or in person only, we'll have to, you know, we'll have to work on, we haven't had a contest since COVID began. So we haven't, uh, uh, and, and so I don't know how we're going to, that'll be a discussion I guess we'll have to have with the board and maybe even with the law department uh, as to how we're gonna conduct the election. But given that, um, and uh, I guess I didn't ask, I should have asked before we started, Lenny, do you know, or, at this moment, or we, what's our plan for the December meeting? Um, we we don't know at the moment because uh, the the emergency is we haven't been extended past the date of the December meeting, but we're extended past today's date, so we can meet virtually today. So that's the problem. We'll have to wait until we know whether if we're going to be live, then that's easy. Then so the way the way I'll answer the question is this: as of now. We are planning to be in person because there's no indication that the executive order will be extended. However, okay. at any given moment, once we are identified that the executive order has been extended, if it is, then we will automatically divert to virtual meeting because it brings out greater participation. So that, that's the answer to that question. The second question I have is, it, and this is just a thought process, if I can imagine that candidates could be caught off guard in get, being prepared to provide Q and A and answer some questions and as you to use your words campaign. In, in fairness to giving people time to collect their thoughts, must we do that tonight or can we carve out some? Well, time I don't. I, I do think the bylaws things? the bylaws provide for that, but the right. if we gather, however we gather in December, whether virtually or in person, there is no reason that in advance of the committee's spot on the agenda for conducting the election that we can accommodate them because it's, we now know 
that only one there's only one office and there's only going to be two candidates it's not going to take up a huge amount of time in december if we do it that way so right because um, what know, i what i like board, to suggest is given that i don't want anyone to feel like they're being caught off guard to collect their thoughts that if they're if it's permissible and i think the bible is to permit that that we allow individuals to collect their thoughts and then campaign or make a statement in December before we take a vote, because that I don't want somebody to be caught off guard and not collect their thoughts. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And as the parliamentarian, my my other hat, I'll change hats. Uh, I, I think that um, as long as you put it in the agenda, then we can conduct that. Everyone's got due notice about it. And also, um, whoever listens to the questions and the answers here today, if they don't show up in December, they can't vote because the only people who can vote, there's no proxy voting. Uh, so the only people who can actually make the selection are those who show up in December as opposed to those who may be on the meeting today. So I have no objection. So if that's the case uh, and that's how you want to do it, then I will say that the work of the committee is over for tonight. And we will, um, I remind everybody that as with the election that you went to a couple of weeks ago in October for the position of district manager, we're gonna do the same process. Paper ballots, the names of the candidates will be on the ballot if, we, if we're live, if, we're not, if we have to find another way of doing it. But one way or another, your vote's gonna be recorded. Your vote, you, you, won't, you won't be a live call out, Viva votes you vote. We won't go around and ask each person to cast their vote, but you will vote, you will sign your ballot, and print your name so we know what your vote is, and that vote will appear in the minutes of that meeting. So it's a secret to begin with, but because we are subject to the public officer's law, we have to do it. We have we have to record the result so that everybody knows for in perpetuity who voted for whom. So uh, know that when we, uh, however we figure out, we're going to gather to vote in December, but otherwise the work of the committee for tonight is over. I wanna thank um, the chair and co-chair, Mr. Smith, Mr. Quint, and all the members of the committee for getting us to this point. You know, the, this is another yet requirement of the way we conduct business under the charter and as we do uh, for community board too. So I thank the committee for their work and I encourage everyone to participate, be a part of the uh, meeting in December, and I would encourage uh, the two candidates to feel free to, you know, share information as you choose to uh, electronically through email and then be prepared to have a statement prior to the vote. And I'm going to ask the district manager to make sure that that's on the agenda for December. Okay. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate that. Um, let me move into the next item on the agenda is committees for action. But before I do that, I do want to take the time to recognize that we do have uh, elected officials who are in person. I know that several have conflicts and I wanna be respectful of their time. And so when we have the principal themselves, I try to make the uh, consideration for the principal and it knows that are representing elected officials will call you later on. So with that, let me uh, reach out and introduce uh, Assemblywoman Joanne Simon, who is present. Hi there, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I, I hope everyone is well. I wanted to just stop by um, to uh, bring my, my greetings, you know, to tell you that we're working hard on um, getting things ready for next session. Um, I was, uh, you know, honored to have been uh, reelected uh, last night. So you're stuck with me for another two years. And uh, I'm looking forward to working with everybody and certainly uh, happy to answer any questions that people have. You know, among the things that we're, go we're going to be working on for some time and are currently working on, of course, is the BQE, uh, the triple cantilever, but also those connections just above, uh, you know, Sand Street and below Atlantic. Um, and uh, also, uh, you know, the, a, a number of issues in, in downtown Brooklyn um, that are, uh, uh, are, are sort of ever present, whether it's traffic and congestion, all of those things are things that we're, we're, we're working on uh, and working very collaboratively with the other elected officials in the area. And so I think that um, 
and that's all I feel like I, I uh, wanted to say tonight, but I did want to just stop by and, uh, and uh, say thank everybody. Um, and um, uh, to, you know, I'll be, be, maybe I'll be visiting in December. I'm not sure what the, the timing is and, I, and I'll try to make that in person. Thank you, Assemblywoman. I'm gonna, as our custom, I'll call on three board members who may have questions. So if any any three board members have questions for the Assemblywoman this evening, uh, now's the time to raise your hand virtually or physically. All right, great. Joanne, I guess it means you're doing a good job. Keep up the good work. And um, you're welcome to continue to uh, listen as we conduct the rest of the business for CV2 this evening. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Uh, and uh, 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 everybody have a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. You Thank too. You. Thank you. You're muted, Lynn. That's why Lynn Jordan is the first vice chair. Um, next item for um, on the agenda is committees for action. We'll start with health, environment, and social services. I would ask that the um, chairpersons introduce themselves, and if you would introduce your co-chairs. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Brandon Smith. I'm chair of uh, Health, Environment, Social Services. My co-chair is Nicole McKnight, and my secretary is the wonderful Jessica Thurston. Um, I am pleased to announce that we only had one liquor license that we uh, heard and reviewed that was new at our last meeting. It was not too controversial, so I will roll right through it. Um, the application was for 20 Columbia Place. It, it's a establishment called Clover Hill. It is located on Columbia Place between Juraliman and State in Brooklyn Heights. And it has hours of operation of 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Saturday and 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Sunday. Indoors only, so no outdoor seating. And the applicant had actually just presented to our committee a little earlier in the year. Um, however, their uh, application lapsed at the SLA and they had to come back in order to renew it. They didn't have any changes. We had a brief discussion with them about, on the one hand, it seemed they had been doing some BYOB after having some bad lawyer advice, but they were very straightforward and owned up to it and, and informed us that um, upon learning, getting the right advice, they stopped doing the, the BYOB. Uh, we also spoke a little bit about their step and the potential to make it more accessible for people with wheelchairs. We, we gave them a suggestion to put a ramp in, but it was not a condition of the motion, so it's not a subject of what we'd be voting on here tonight. With uh, that discussion concluded, the, um, a motion was made to approve the application once again. It was passed by a margin of 900. Uh, that's the extent of my report for the evening, but I'm happy to take questions. Can I get a motion on the committee's recommendation? Mr. Gordon, can I get a second? Ms. Fibers, is there any discussion on the motion? Okay, great. Hearing none, all in favor, please raise your hand or indicate aye virtually. Okay, great. You can take your hands down for me, all those who have them are virtually. Okay, is there anyone opposed? If you would raise your hand if you're opposed. Great, is it? Maisha, I just want to be clear, are you opposed or are you taking your hand down? Maisha, I, I, see, I saw your hand go up twice. I'm not clear which vote is that for, in favor or opposed? 
Ms. Morales? Okay. Um, is there anyone who's abstaining? Okay, it looks like it's unanimous by my count. Jessica, okay, great. Um, Mr. Smith, is that it? That's it, no issues with the renewals. Okay, great, thank you. Um, next item on the agenda is for land use. Um, and so I'll call the chair for the land use committee. Thank you, Chair Lanny. Uh, for the, just uh, I'll let everybody get no thanks to uh, Karen Johnson, our secretary, for pulling uh, these complicated uh, minutes together for that we will be presenting. Uh, Dr. Kostoffin was not able to make it for tonight uh, as our co-chair. She has to take care of her sister, uh, who is stuck. <coughs> excuse me in Florida with the uh, upcoming uh, hurricane. So Dodge will doing, and you'll be helping on that. And I'm Carlton Gordon. Just give me a second. Okay, excuse me. Then it got a little dry. All right, now we'll have first coming up, uh, as you can see from the agenda, um, uh, 43 Clark Street, uh, 111 Hicks Street, which is a Euler. So I just wanted, and I was going to check with you, Lenny, on this. We'll be, after I present this, uh, we'll be doing the normal roll call for the Euler. Now, That's right. all Euler for the roll call vote. Yeah, we'll do a roll call vote after it. Now, I, after that is the Brooklyn uh, Navy Yard, which was a hearing, although it's not a Euler. Uh, that will not go to roll call. Okay, That's so correct. now what we'll do is I'll do the, We'll do the Euler, do the roll call, and then I'll do the Brooklyn Navy Yard and the uh, Landmark Preservation Commission things all in the regular package. Okay, if there's no objection, well, that's how yeah. we'll proceed. Yeah, I, okay, I, would suggest, I, I would just suggest we do it in the reverse. Let's get everything out the way first and then do the Euler. Okay, so all right. Then I'll start with the uh, Brooklyn Navy Yard. There you go, perfect. Uh, Okay, uh, we have Brooklyn Navy Yard, uh, which is to you know it's a, it's they're asking for a, basically wayfinding and signage. It's a uh, what they're doing is to try to make a more uniform signage and so that people can get around the Brooklyn Navy Yard a little easier. They're also looking at doing uh, uh, concrete and other things. On, this, on the roadways and also gates that will be movable easily going up and down so that it'll be, people be able to get in and out of the Brooklyn Navy Yard with easily. Uh, we liked what we saw there and we did approve that one uh, 11 zero, I think it was 11 zero one, yeah. Now we'll move over to the Landmark Preservation Commission uh, Certificates of Appropriateness. Uh, let me just flip through my pages. You'll give me a second. Okay. The first one. You guys see that, right? There we go. Oh, yeah. Okay. Where am I now? Hold on. Yeah, I'm just going to get my uh, <laughs> my notes straightened out. Okay, yes. The first, after the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Hold on. Okay. It's 140, uh, yes. 140 State Street in the Brooklyn Heights Historic District. On uh, that one, uh, basically, what the, we, it was a request by the uh, owners or the applicants for work to be done on the windows uh, for at the front, uh, which would put on you know, with these new type of windows with strips, uh, which would and was also a request to do a coloring of the front entrance door. We discussed the matter with this, uh, with the owner on this, or at least the architect on this one. We had problems with it. Uh, we felt that just simply just putting the, the way to, what they were going to do with the strips 
on the windows was insufficient. Uh, we, and after discussions on this, we rejected the application at a 641. So we turned down, we rejected that particular application for uh, 4140 State Street. Uh, now the next one is 158 Bergen Street, which is in Borm Hill. Uh, that one we did accept, uh, that one we did ex accept, uh, yes, we did accept it at eight, uh, eight, two, and one. What we did on that one was to, that what, what the application on that one was to do work uh, along the, the, the front the brick face, uh, on the stoops, There'll be some, you know, work on the stoops to uh, get it, you know, into better condition. Uh, they're also going to do some work at the rear. They'll be expanding the rear a bit, about twelve feet into the donut. And we felt on that one that we was uh, that the work was good. Uh, it was not. It was acceptable, uh, and we found that we accepted it again. Eight two two one. The next one is a place that we all know pretty well by now, uh, 357 Claremont Avenue, which is the uh, Bishop, Lock Bishop Lachlan uh, High School. Now, what they were asking for on this one was to uh, legalize the, well, there's a sign that's on the corner that announces one of those announcing those signs that announces activities, the LED sign that's on the corner. Uh, they also wanted to try to uh, do some of the plantings around it to make it more acceptable. On that one, unfortunately, we had to turn it down at a 12 nothing uh, vote. We felt that we could not do it. It was not acceptable. Uh, the community groups uh, in Clinton Hill came out against the way it was and we did ex and we did propose that they work that Mitch Blockland at the staff that they and the architects that they hire work with the community group to see if a more acceptable uh, signage or something could be done at that but right now we felt that this was not it could not be accepted and therefore we had to reject the uh, Bishop Lockland's uh, proposal. We felt bad about it because we have a good relationship with Bishop Lachlan. We would have liked to have seen it, kept it, but they weren't able to uh, keep it. And so we asked that that one had, we, we stayed at 12.00 to reject their application. Uh, okay. And then finally, we have a two new houses at 50 Clifton Place and 302 Grand Avenue over in Clinton Hill. Uh, now I'll say at the start that when it is, this is new construction on a vacant lot, and when there's new construction on a vacant lot, the proposals or the architects, or uh, let's say the applicants, have a, uh, let's say the flexibility to put up you know, designs and proposals that could be more, you know, they doesn't have to necessarily reflect the, let's say the surrounding buildings around it. They can put up, you know, what they feel is something that's nice. It could be modern, could be, you know, or whatever. But, it, you know, it's just to keep the bear in mind that there's more flexibility in a new property or new buildings coming up in the historic district than let's say exist, existing buildings. Having said that, uh, these are two, three story buildings with a, you know, that are going to be side by side over on one and grand, one and grand over on, and the other one over on Clifton. Uh, there'll be a space in between which there'll be tree, you know, some trees, 
a little bit of space and also for parking, you know, of, of a couple of, I guess, well, a couple of cars as well. Um, one of the buildings will be in uh, have a brownstone, uh, let's say, exterior. The other one will have a brick exterior. Um, the local community groups were a little concerned with some of the coloring uh, with the uh, with one of the buildings. So what we did approve it, and we did you know we did approve it, uh, but we did also a, a say it's a condition of the approval that the uh, applicants work with the local community groups to you know to make you know let's say a more acceptable and a more uh, let's say you know reasonable you know uh, say a uh, you know proposal. So we did this. We we accepted, but we did approve that one. I think that one was uh, was it eight? Yes, I'm trying to get. Yeah, I don't have the front. I don't have the score in front of me, but we do have. It was accepted on that one as well. Oh, here it is. Yes, I have it. Ten, zero, ten, one, one. It was accepted. Ten, one, one. Excuse me. So those. The, those are our uh, those are our proposed, and we ask for your uh, support on the from the Brooklyn Navy Yard and the uh, our proposals on the Landmark Preservation Commission certificates of appropriateness. So, Mr. Mr. Gordon, um, yeah, as I look at the agenda, excuse me for not catching this earlier, but this shows the first item forty three clock one eleven hits as going to. Yeah. Board of Standards and Appeals. That's not a that's a BSA application. That's not a Europe. Uh we, we the 43 Clark and Hicks is that came out to be well, we were told it's to be a Euler. Yeah, no, it, it it's listed as a what a, a BSA application going to the Board of Standards and Appeals. The Board of Standards and Appeals, yes. So let me just check. District manager, is that correct? Mr. Singletary, that is correct. It's a BSA application for an extension of a variance. Okay, so if that's the case, Mr. Gordon, you can present this as well. Okay, all right. Then I guess we don't need the uh, the roll call then on the. Uh... You are correct. Right. Okay. All right. That's fine then. All right. So that was the Clark and uh, Hicks Street is a proposal. There are variances for at that location, uh, even though, yes, it has to go to the Board of Standards and Appeal. Uh, on that one, the one is, it's a, basically it's, a, well, it, it was an old, previously designated as a physical culture establishment. What it really is, it's a squash court and a gym. Uh, and they're doing some, it's a new owner called DGB, DGE Ventures that's actually taking over the uh, operation of that particular location. Uh -huh. They've been there a number of years, many years, and it has been, they've had previous approvals going back, uh, back into the 90s from both the community board and from uh, Standards and Appeal. What they're doing is that they want to expand the, uh, Working hours from, uh, let's say, open hours from six a.m. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, I need. Sorry. I need to step away one second. Um, Lenny, you got to take over. I got an issue. I need this take. Okay. Okay, Mister. All right, whenever you're ready. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, so what we're on that one? They're asking for the expansion of hours. Uh, they're asking for. A more time to uh, get their uh, certificate of of occupancy uh, CFO ready, you know, on that one. Uh, and they're asking for let's see what else. Yeah, you know, those are, those are the, the main. And they had a couple other items that they were asking, but they're mainly asking for variances to allow for the operation, to allow for work, you know, for their, you know dealing with the Board of Standards of Appeals. And we did approve that one. 
uh, yes, 12 zero, zero. Yes, uh, we, we liked it. Uh, we sh I should make note that uh, council, council member uh, Lincoln Bressler uh, sent his, uh, you know, he's filed his, his, his support of the application. Uh, it's also, I should make note that it's a, uh, that the work that they're doing is a not-for-profit, uh, especially for the uh, folks for uh, squash. They're trying to open up more and more pe younger people to come in who don't necessarily have the money in order to learn the, how to do squash uh, on, on the squash courts. So we ask for that approval as well on the, on Hicks and Clark, you know, 43 Hicks Street and uh, one, you know, 43 Clark Street and 111 Hicks Street. So we ask for approval of all the items that I have uh, laid, laid out. Okay, that, that's it, Mr. Gordon? That's it, oh. Okay. So I'd like to, I'd ask for a motion to approve the committee's recommendations. Uh, Mr. Scala, second. Ms. Uh, Latrell Moso. All right. Uh, and now it's open for discussion and questions. Ms. Zellegrange. I'm sorry, Ms. Uh, I'm sorry, Ms. Morales first, and then Ms. Zellegrange. Yeah. Um you had thank you. And you mentioned that there were community groups that were opposing it. Can you who are? Can you identify the community groups? Uh, which one are you talking about? The, I, I guess with both. The both uh that you presented that you said community groups were opposing it. Well, they all, all had that, concerns. Is that okay, the 50, uh, 50 Clifton? With the two brownstones? Clif okay, the, the the Cliftons, they oh, gave, God. okay, Clif the, <laughs> okay, the Clifton Grand, now not so much they had opposition, they were some concerns with the colorations, they wanted to work with the architect. The one that they did oppose to, uh, it, it's the, and the groups are the, uh, the Fort Green Association, the, uh, there's the Clinton Hills Association. I'm trying to remember all the two. It's three of them that work together. And usually we get this uh, a lady named Roseanne Sinisi who comes and gives us the uh, on behalf of the uh, of the three groups. The one that they did propose, they did oppose, was the, uh, the signage uh, that's in front that the advertising signage, I guess, or the bulletin board signage that's at the uh, the Bishop Lachlan High School. If it's right on the corner, I don't know if you if you had a chance to see it or if you ever had a chance, you know, going by there, going down on uh, was it green? Yeah, it's the uh, current signage. This, yeah, the big signage. Yeah, and they, we felt that they felt that the the signage could not be legalized and it was inappropriate. They were willing to work with Bishop Lachlan as to see what can be uh, something that could be perhaps be placed in there. But at this time, uh, we could not agree. We could not agree to legalize it, and the community groups uh, oppose that. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Zellegrange. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I just in reading the agenda, there were a number of items here that were conditionally, you know, were had conditions along with the uh, the vote, and you didn't always refer to them. But I'm assuming we're we're discussing we're voting on them with those conditions that were suggested by the committee. I just wanted to confirm that. Yeah. The one that had really that suggested is the, uh, is the grant, you know, the, the, the grant, the one over on a uh, Clifton grant, Clifton, the, the Clifton grant had a uh, definite uh, propose, proposal. Yeah. They asked for, you know, to, you know, for these, uh, I guess, say conditions. And the other one that we accepted, we accepted um, Bergen Street with no, uh, no real problem. We had no problems on that one. Okay. Thank you. Right. Okay. Are there any other? Well, well, excuse me. One second. Say here that 
um, the approval for Bergen Street was conditioned on them reducing the 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 size to two stories. This thing coming out because I can't. Why is this thing? Okay, no, no, that, that was the rear. There's, there's a thing on the rear more than anything else. Uh, yeah, we that was, the, and that really that came more from the committee uh, than anything else. That the the rear of because they're doing an expansion on the rear as well. Right. Okay, but that's part of the it's the condition. Yeah, it's part of, of the approval. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I can't. Uh, <clears throat> are there any other hands that are up? Because I can't. Uh, okay, now I can see Ms. Peterson. Ms. Peterson. Hi. Yes. Hi. Good evening, everyone. I just had a quick question uh, for Carlton about the lighting at yeah. Bishop Lachlan. So, are we now getting into? Because um, it seems like I remember Emmanuel was trying to do some lighting, and it was an issue there. So now Bishop Lachlan is trying to do some lighting. Is it too bright? Exactly. Like what is the I, signage? I just, it, yeah, it's the sign. Yeah, yeah. we're getting a. You are getting a lot of these now in that part of Clinton Hill, uh, and it is. There yeah, is I know where it is. Opposition. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know where it is. I I'm just trying to be clear in my mind about what it is that the committee is saying about why. It should not be there. And what are the, what are the, what is the discussion or what, what is our guide in terms of whether who should have lighting and who shouldn't because this person on this corner said it shouldn't it's be there. It's the lighting. Like it. It actually, it was the signage itself. At the signage itself, it's but the a, signage uh, is an LED signage, so that's lighting. So I'm just trying to understand yeah. what does that mean for the signage. Does it is it uh, directly impacting others in their homes or in their apartment uh, co-op uh, apartment units? Yeah. But what is the what's guiding us? Like what is the what is the requirement? Uh, Landmark. I'm sorry. This is okay. Wait, 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 one that second. one must meet. So I'm trying to understand. I'm trying okay. to understand that because I, I'm just not clear on it. Okay, so Ms. Peterson had a question, Mr. Um, Gordon, you can give an answer, and then Ms. Blunt. Blunt. We, we are trying to work our way around the signage issues with the possible. We were informed that it is, at this point, it could not be legalized. They were asking to be legalized, and that in its present condition, it just could not be legalized. So that's why we voted against it. Right, but I don't know what that means that it's not legalized. That's what I'm trying to ask. Yeah. Uh, very simple. Let me All right, one second. Very Mr. simple. Mr. Me, Augustus, Mr. Augustus, yeah, you'll be very next. Very simple. Mr. Augustus, response. you'll be next. You'll be next. All right, after Ms. Blount. All right, let's just uh, get. All right, so Ms. Peterson, you had a backup question, and then we'll go on to the. You're, you're muted. You have to unmute yourself. I'm just trying to have a better understanding. So the question hasn't really been been answered, and so you know maybe it could be it's offline. A very or simple. It's a, I don't okay. know. It's a, well, Mr. Augustus, I'm going to get to you. One second. All right. All right, Ms. Peterson. All right, Mr. Gordon. Do you have any other thing? Any other no, uh, reply? No, to that? Okay, Ms. Blount. I think uh, I think Mr. Augustus is going to say the same thing I say. These lights are in a landmark district. This is a landmark issue. We, they have to follow the landmark regs. It's a whole write-up in landmark about lighting in this area. I mean, I think it was, uh, Ms. Sinisi has submitted it. It's not the community. It's not individuals who doesn't want the lighting. It's, this is a landmark issue. I'm finished. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Augustus. It ain't that complicated. It's a very simple um, uh, zoning issue, right? Uh, it, and it's based upon uh, the uh, the um, zoning works regarding the illumination of lighting uh, that is prohibited 
It's a very simple zoning issue. It is prohibited uh, in a residential uh, context, uh, 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 zone. The only exception to that would probably be uh, hospitals and uh, and um, associated sort of medical care. But uh, uh, the it's a violation, and it, I and it, and it was done uh, not intentionally. They did not read the uh, regs uh, regarding lighting. Uh, that sort of illuminating lighting in a residential neighborhood, uh, and uh, and and that's it. This and it, and it was illegal, uh, and we could not make something uh, legal that was illegal, and that was it. That's up to uh, to the uh, to to uh, landmark to further, to uh, no further up. It ain't that complicated. It's a simple violation of the zoning zoning code. That's all. All right, thank you, Mr. Augustus. Now, there was a note in the uh, that I I overlooked there from our uh, district manager. Uh, the LED signage is not in compliance with the current zoning and inappropriate for the historic district. So that's that's the that's that the, is correct. Yeah. All righty. Any more questions or comments about the committee's uh, recommendation? Okay, so I'm gonna ask for a vote. Uh, all there in favor for the, uh, approving the committee's recommendations, please raise your hands. Ms. Thurston, are you able to get a? I'm gonna count the opposite. So I, yeah, we'll count opposition and um, abstentions. So y'all can put your hands down. And okay, please. Right, we put you down your electronic hands. Now, all those that are, okay, there's a couple more people, Lindsay, okay. Lindsay. So, Lindsay, are you opposed? Just wanna make sure your hand is correct. Ms. Einhorn. My hand is stuck. I'm trying to put it down, sorry. Okay, oh, okay. no problem. All right, all those opposed? That was opposed, abstaining. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I all right, all those abstaining. Yes. Okay. Right. Motion passes to approve the committee's report. I'm, okay. uh, I need a minute here. I, uh, I think I raised my hand at the wrong time. I'm sorry about that. I meant to uh, to support the committee's recommendations, so please move my vote over. You're okay. noted as uh, in the uh, in the affirmative. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, at this time, I just want to recognize our uh, uh, city council member uh, Lincoln Rexler. Oh. Okay. Oh, we're finished. <laughs> he went through. Well, All right. Thank you. I, oh, okay. Mr. Uh, Gordon, were you finished yeah. with your report? Yes, yeah, I'm done. That's what I need. You didn't tell me. All right. Okay, yes. thank you. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Council Member Ressler. Mr. Mr. Jordan, uh, Mr. Ressler actually just has a conflict and he'll be right back. Be right back. Oh, CB2, okay. I'll be right back right. in a minute. I'm sorry. I'm on with CB1. I apologize. Okay, no problem. All right, we'll, we'll get back to Council Member Ressler. Uh, Mr. Gordon, I'm sorry, I cut you off. Did you have something else that you had to say? No, no, I just wanted to make sure. Usually I get the thank you, okay, it's passing. Oh, I'm sorry, know. I apologize for that. I kind of yeah. got thrust, thrust into this. Yeah. All, right. So, all right. I thank you so much, okay. Mr. Gordon. Thank you and the committee for their hard work. Uh, and for Thank your, you very uh, much. Presentation. You're welcome. All right. Welcome. Um, and now, uh, Transportation and Public Safety Committee, Mr. Sid Meyer is next on the agenda. Mr. Meyer? Mr. Meyer is not here. Um, Mr. Meyer is not here. This is Esther Blunt. I'm the co-chair. We did not have a meeting in September. Okay, Ms. Blunt. There, there was something on the agenda, though. Is it? Oh, God. At least the agenda that I have. We yes. had a meeting in October, Esther. The Bond Schirmerhorn study. If you're unprepared to speak on oh. it, we can um, 
come back. And I, I also, I was at, I can speak if uh, Esther doesn't want to. It's so John. I am on, on, I'm not ready to speak on it. I'm allowed yeah, so, to. So I'm, I'm back. Thank you, Mr. Uh, let's okay. do it. Wait, yes, all right. One, one second, I'm, folks. Yeah, I'm back. So Mr. Quint hey. is going to report on uh, the agenda item for transportation and public safety. Yeah, thank, thank you, uh, okay. Leonard. Thank you, Lenny. Um, we had a meeting in October, and uh, prior to that meeting, Council Member Ressler, who will come back on, uh, sent a letter, uh, a letter, a joint letter, I think, uh, beside himself. Uh, yeah, Assembly, yeah, it was, it was Councilman Ressler, Assemblyman, Assembly Member Simon, and uh, Senator Gennardis, uh asked transportation to, uh, Transport Department of Transportation, to look again at Skimmerhorn. Uh, you will remember in our, if, if you read the minutes of our prior meetings, I think before the summer, we had a presentation from Trans DOT that they were gonna make uh, the bike lane, they're gonna make Skimmerhorn one way to improve uh, flow on Skimmerhorn and also to create a better bike lane. Uh, the result of that one way conversion, which had taken place over the summer, uh, created a problem for uh, residents who lived either on Skimmerhorn or on some of the side streets because of the way that um, the side streets were made one way, too often one way in the same direction, after one after another, that residents or people who had to get from a side street out of the neighborhood uh, had to make, had to sometimes go around the block just to just to uh, move, so there was a uh, a uh, proposal to make the uh, what's already a one way street on Bond uh, reverse the direction on Bond so that the one way street that Bond was north of Skimmerhorn would continue further. So that's the uh, uh, the recommendation was that uh, uh, DOT study the uh, reversal of that one block of bond uh, between Livingston and Skimmerhorn to allow uh, for a better flow of traffic. So it's really a request uh, to, uh, and, and the district office received complaints about it from residents and members of the, from residents and other people in the community who use Skimmerhorn or use the side streets. So uh, we're, uh, it's a recommendation, it's a vote on the committee voted 10-02 to uh, request that DOT study and uh, revise the, uh, that one block of bond to allow for better flow. So you're simply uh, a vote in favor is to support the request to DOT to study and uh, hopefully implement this one block reversal. I think Mr. Singletary is back. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're muted, there is that. Thank you, Mr. Quint. Um, can I entertain a motion to accept the committee's recommendation? Ms. Zalig Ringer, a second Ms. Ihorn. Is there any discussion on the motion? Um, Hearing none, all in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, you can take your hands down. Okay, you can take your hands down. Please take your hands down. Anyone opposed? Please raise your hand. Any abstentions? Okay. Committee's motion passes. Thank you. And that's a perfect segue to Lincoln, who's now back. Councilmember Ressler. 
Chair Singletary, I want to not only congratulate you on another term, we are very, very, very fortunate to have you in this leadership role um, and each of the members who've been reelected, uh, I guess by running on a post or reelected tonight, congratulations to Mr. Jordan and Ms. Thurston. As a former CB2 secretary, Jessica, you have all of my admiration and empathy. <laughs> I think you must be the longest serving secretary in the history of CB2. You deserve an award. I'd I like a cape. That... Sorry? I want a cape. Cape. Yeah. You deserve it. You deserve it. Whatever it is that you want, you deserve. Listen, don't um, talk her out of the seat. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's going to have to stay in it if she wants the cape, you know? So, and I want to congratulate Taya, uh, who's done a phenomenal job. I do not understand how you've been able to do three people's job over this period of time, but you've done it and you've done it exceptionally well. Um, so we're fortunate to have you officially, formally in the role as district manager and hopefully with a great team supporting you in the future. Um, you know, very well deserved. Congratulations. So congrats to the whole team. Um, just a few quick updates on my end. Um, I had a chance to spend the morning again at 90 Sand Street, uh, uh, the brand new supportive housing development in, in Dumbo. This is the largest supportive housing development in the history of Brooklyn. I mean, it is an extraordinary accomplishment. I'm so proud that it's right here in our community over 300 units of housing for formerly homeless individuals, over 491 units of, or 491 units of housing uh, that is deeply affordable for our community. Uh, it's a great accomplishment. Uh, we were there with folks from Concord Village this morning, uh, getting a full tour of the building. We did a ribbon cutting last week. Um, if anyone's interested in getting involved, uh, I know CB2 has been a part of our community advisory board that we're continuing to, um, uh, uh, to have meetings. Uh, but I think uh, they're off to a great start, um, and I'm really excited about that development. It is gorgeous. If you want to, we should set up a CB2 tour for anyone who hasn't seen it. I mean, it's really, it's something. Um, we've also been doing a clothing drive in our office for the new homeless shelter in downtown Brooklyn. I uh, want to thank CB2 again for your great partnership on kind of the town hall you held in, in advance of the shelter opening and participating with us in the cab and being such active partners in all things. Um, but if folks have men's clothes that they want to drop off, come to our office. We're going to continue to gather clothes until early December. We donated, I don't know how many hundreds of pounds of clothes last week, and we're going to keep going uh, because the folks over there really need it. Um, I think everyone in, in Brooklyn Heights, especially in the surrounding neighborhoods, have been fixated on the BQE and rightly so. You know, I was pretty darn disappointed by the meetings that DOT held on BQE Central uh, uh, last month um, that, you know, didn't really provide an opportunity for community input. Uh, and we're now waiting until mid-December to hear what the what DOT is planning to do. Uh, they're going to be moving forward very quickly with applications to the federal government uh, in the spring. And our office is, you know, laser focused on monitoring what's happening very carefully. Uh, Joanne and Andrew Gennardis and Dan Goldman and I have begun meeting regularly and are, are working closely together to try to make sure that the elected officials are actively providing oversight uh, for this project and speaking with one voice for our community. It's just too important. Um, I wanted to also just highlight last week we announced uh, our tree plan for District 33 that I am really excited about. Uh, we are going to be planting 3,400 trees at every available uh, viable tree pit across our district over the next four years. Uh, it is, um, it's going to be great. Uh, every, every block deserves all the street trees, in my opinion. Um, they are tremendous for dealing with urban heat island effect, for stormwater runoff, um, and they're just beautiful. And so uh, we're going to be, uh, the Parks Department's going to be planting about two thirds of those trees themselves. Our council budget off, our council budget is going to be funding a number of new trees. And we're asking for neighbors to, to, to contribute as well. And we've been raising a fair bit of money just from uh, the generosity of, of people in our community and are going to continue to cultivate that in the months and years to come. Uh, really want to thank everybody who has already signed up for some of the new tree care pit events that we're doing. Um, we're, uh, we've got one November 19th in Brooklyn Heights, um, and we're going to be uh, hosting uh, 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 citizen pruner events uh, for folks who want to be trained as citizen pruners in the spring, and we're doing tree care events all across the district um, throughout the spring as well so that we can do a better job of keeping our trees healthy. Uh, we're doing some announcement on dog runs next week. Uh, we're trying to our goal is to have really high quality dog runs in every neighborhood in our district. And we're putting some new legislation in to try and hold the parks department to account to, to improve the conditions in those dog runs. Um, and the last thing I just wanted to say is we are 
rapidly moving toward the finish line on 280 Bergen. Um, we have been successful in securing CB2's recommendation for a parking waiver at this site. So we're that's going to be filed at the end of the year. There will be no new parking at that development. Um, and we've been having positive conversations with both the city and HPD on the two publicly owned lots that had been used as parking, where we are confident we're going to secure 100% of deeply affordable housing for very low income and low income New Yorkers. And uh, we're making progress with the developers at 280 Bergen on the final issues relating to the project. Uh, Daughtry and Sid and Howard from the BHA and the NYCHA leadership from uh, Wyckoff Gardens and Warren Street have been incredibly helpful and the Fifth Avenue Committee in providing some input and guidance. These are all stakeholders in the immediate vicinity as well as um, you know, reps of key local groups. I really just wanna thank them again for their involvement and guidance uh, as we've tried to bring community leaders to the table with developers to help us get to better outcomes on ULERP projects that come across our desk. I think it's a, a better model than um, you know, what we've seen too much in the past. So those are some quick and dirty updates from me, um, but uh, most of all, I just wanna underscore my congratulations to the executive committee and to Taya. Um, thank you all for everything you do. Thank you, council member Ressler. Um, as is our custom, when we have the, the, rep, the uh, elected in person, we try to carve out a few minutes for question. Always. So, um, if there's any community, board, any board members um, have questions, I'll ask for three questions to be considered at a time. And I see um, Ms. Barbara Zalagringa raised her hand. And if there are two others that have questions, please raise your hand. Barbara. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. Uh, Lincoln, thanks for being here tonight. You mentioned the dog runs. Um, we're having a parks committee meeting on Monday, and I was wondering if there's anyone from your office who maybe could come to our meeting and give us an update on what you have in mind. We may, Monday may be tough. We're going to be uh, releasing our dog plan later in the week. So after we put it out, we'd be happy to come to the next meeting and, and present. I can come myself or Arvin from our team who's on here, who's superb if you don't know him. Um, but here, I would be happy to come to the next park committee meeting if that would work. I think we're still just putting the final final touches on things uh, as we make something public midweek. Okay, I appreciate that. Great, thanks. Ms. Looking Morales. forward to hearing about it. Great, Me, I'm excited. Miss Morales. Hi. Good evening, Lincoln. Um, I, I I I'm not sure if can we ask a redistricting question. I just wanted to make sure if it was. Lenny, in reference yeah. to the district. Okay, um, so I know that the city council was going to be redistricted. I guess my question is, how are the maps official and where will you still be part of community board two? So uh, this one breaks my heart a little bit. Um, uh, thank you for the question, Maisha. Uh, we are um, we are now. Uh, done with the redistricting process in the council. Uh, the lines have been formally adopted uh, as of last week. And I, we're gonna send an email out to our, our group, if not this week, uh, next week to everyone on our list explaining what's happened. But unfortunately for us, uh, District 33 had grown in population more than any other district in the city of New York. We were at 23 or 20 or so percent over population. We had to lose more than one in five, almost one in four of our constituents in the redistricting process so that all of the uh, districts would be of equal population. And as a result, um, uh, we had to shed a, a fair amount of our district. Uh, we, we lost portions of the north side of Williamsburg. We lost portions in South Williamsburg, including four public housing developments in South Williamsburg. Uh, we lost all of the CB6 portion of our district, so the Gowanus into Borum Hill areas. And we even lost a couple of the most southern blocks of CB2. Um, we still represent almost all of the remainder of uh, almost, you know, otherwise we have the same portion of CB2 that we do now. Crystal's district didn't really change. Uh, she changed one block with Chi that I think is in CB3. So I think she and I continue to be essentially representatives of 95% of CB2, 98% of CB2. But now council member Hanif uh, would come in for uh, three or four blocks of CB2 and probably have one representative on the board, one appointment to the board. Um, so. It's tough. We lost all seven of the public housing developments in District 33, um, which I it's just you know truly sad because um, these are, are areas that we've been working really hard and building strong relationships and doing a lot of work to try to um, help make a difference in those communities. Um, 
but uh, this was this is the process, and uh, this is not a process that I had much say in how things. I really didn't have any say in how things would go, um, and we are where we are. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Got away with only two questions. Oh, almost. Thomas. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Uh, thanks for being here, Councilmember Ressler. Uh, so I have a question about uh, the tree planting plan. Uh, so I was, I, was, I was reading an editorial in the New York Post that said that New Jersey is able to plant their trees for $500 each instead of $2,500. And I was wondering if you could share any insights about where that price disparity comes from. I can, I can appreciate that New York City salaries are a little higher than Jersey City, but not five times higher. Um, and are there any legislative remedies that could that could be implemented to bring the cost down? Because if if well, there are, if we could get fifteen hundred or sorry, fifteen thousand trees instead of just three thousand. Totally, um, Thomas. I really appreciate that question. Thank you. Uh, I had I didn't see the post editorial. I had we I did. It was one of the few times I've signed a a, a letter with the council Republicans, uh, which I did earlier this year. Uh, where we sent a letter to, to Mayor Fulop of Jersey City asking him how he is managing to um, uh, sign uh, to to implement trees so you know plant new trees so inexpensively. I thought they were at a thousand bucks a tree. We are at thirty six hundred dollars a tree on average citywide in planting trees through the Parks Department. It's even more egregious than the the twenty five hundred number you cited. If we do it through a nonprofit organization that's affiliated with the with the Parks Department and the City Parks Foundation, we get down to about twenty six hundred dollars a tree, but still a massive amount. Um, look, the the cost of doing business in New York City on every type of capital project is just higher than it is anywhere else, uh, from MTA projects to uh, housing development uh, to tree planting, and there is a um, there is an added cost that uh, bidders. Uh, incorporate into the projects that they do here in our city. And it's totally, it's super problematic. It is a real issue that we need to address. Um, I think some of the capital project reform task force that some of the, the recommendations in the capital project reform task force that the mayor and the controller have been working on, I think could offer some opportunities for cost savings, both on tree planting and other capital projects across the board. Uh, we held an oversight hearing in the council of the parks department on exactly this topic and frankly got totally uh, unacceptable answers. Uh, and I've spoken to controller Lander about this and Brad is actually doing an audit and looking at exactly this issue to try to break down all of the different reasons why it's costing the parks department so much damn money to plant every tree. Because uh, as you said, we should be planting two or three times as many with the amount that we're spending on trees. Um, uh, I'm eager for us to figure out how to drive down these costs. Uh, uh, you know, it's something that we need to do. Um, but we also can't afford to wait for the cost to go down because the urgency for us to fight the climate crisis is so great that we've got to, I think, you know, my approach was that we needed to suck this one up and pay it, you know, budget at a higher threshold or higher price point uh, so that we could get the trees that we need across our district. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I hope everybody has a wonderful evening. Lenny, thank you for having me. No, thank you. See everybody here soon. Appreciate it. Take care, guys. All right. Wow. Um, so let me move on to the uh, chairperson's report, item number seven on the agenda. So I have been spending a lot of time uh, in, in meetings and, and taking on different uh, tours without the, throughout the district. Um, I recently took a a tour of 80 Flatbush, take a look at the site and the work that's been done uh, at the Alloy Development. They uh, seem to be moving ahead of schedule. Um, a lot of work being done. It was, it was interesting to see the technology that they're using to build the facility, but it was encouraging to see that it is um, meeting and exceeding the standards of having an LED green and sustainable buildings so look encouraged for what the outcome of that brings to the district uh, that should be a positive um, once that's completed i've also had the opportunity to in in concert with taylor we've had uh, we sat in a few meetings with um 
Council Member Hudson, as part of the safety committee that she has and trying to curb some of the crime and safety issues that exist within the district. Those meetings have gone well. And again, kudos to uh, Council Member Hudson. And I see Casey was here earlier uh, and she will probably um, have some updates for us when we get to the elected officials. So let me pause on the work that's being done there. We also, in, again, in conjunction with Council Member Hudson, um, looked at ways to increase green space and park usage within the, the district. There are two areas that um, could use some a uh, little bit of love and support. And I think, um, again, not wanted to speak for the council member, but I think she's in, inclined to support two recommendations that really came out of uh, Taya's due diligence and research to make sure that there's more uh, green space within CB2. Um, I'd also want to just add, as the council member Ressler mentioned, he and I took part in it as have others on the community board part in the uh, community advisory board for the new shelter that's right on um, Livingston Street in downtown Brooklyn and the efforts and the, the extent of care that is being provided for that shelter is encouraging. It, it seems to be a model that is looking to be successful, but I, I'm, but I'm really happy about the way the process is under, undertaken from start to finish even going back to the days of us having our information system meetings so that the community was aware of what was coming and it seems to have gotten more support. I think they're getting support from the various bids and small businesses that are close by. So all in all, we're pretty much a good process there. Um, and we continue to engage with the community. I, I recently met with a group of individuals and you may have seen some of them at the transportation committee. And I think some of those representatives have been to some of our community board meetings, but it was, it, they they are identified as um, Willoughby Avenue Neighbors United. And essentially while their issues have been to the forefront of the implementation of open streets as it relates to Willoughby Avenue, but they really have, was insightful to me was the way they have carved out suggestions and, and solution oriented conversations that go well beyond just that corridor, right? It, you know, there have been times where we engage with stakeholder groups and they have concerns and things that they're passionate about. And you don't always get a chance to peel back some of that passion and focus on solutions. And I was encouraged that this group um, was moving in that direction. So um, I encourage them to continue to be a stakeholder group and continue to advocate in a way that's positive, but inclusive of you know, the, the uh, entire community. So that concludes my um, chairperson's report. I do wanna thank everyone um, who serves on the board for the energy and the passion you commit to doing the work of the board, doing work of the constituents we represent, but also for the obligations that are required as board members. You know, We all have busy schedules. Um, and sometimes you have to juggle a lot, but I appreciate everyone's commitment and, and the way they stay forward to doing what's required of us as board members. So I want to end with a thank you. So with that, I'm going to move on to item number eight. And again, um, this is where we would have the representatives for the elected officials who are here this evening. And so let me first start with um, Crystal Hudson's office. And then um, we'll go through the rest of the elected officials that I see on the list. And if you are um, representing someone tonight, if you would just put your um, information in the chat, then we'll be able to call upon you. So Casey, we'll start with you first. Sure, thanks Lenny, appreciate it. Hi everyone, my name is Casey Addison. My pronouns are she, her. I serve as Councilmember Hudson's chief of staff. I know Andrew is normally on um, the calls with you all at CB2, but I'm joining this evening as he's on vacation. So I hope that's okay. Um, I just have a handful of announcements to go through, um, mainly just some community updates that I'm, I'm sure you've heard before. Our office has a housing clinic that we run every Wednesdays where you can make an appointment if you need any help with the housing lottery, your landlord wanting to understand your rights, 
or if you're having any issues with your housing, um, we have a housing expert that comes in. So you can make appointments with us to see her. Um, we also have an attorney that's in on Thursdays who's able to help you with a range of issues, whether it's um, you know, about your home that you own or you know, any, any real problem that you'd like legal counsel for. His name is Keith. He's from um, New York City's law school. And so he's in on Thursdays as well. You can make an appointment with our office and I'll, I'll place that contact information in the chat when I'm done. Um, we're also collecting donations, mainly um, vital needs like coats, clothing, um, supplies for, for, for babies and young children, for the migrants that have come into the city. We don't have a shelter in District 35, but we know that there are students that are in some of the local schools and there's a men's shelter at the Armory. So we've been organizing uh, donations for the past month. Um, you can drop things off also at our office or at the BAM or Councilmember Chio Say's office is also partnering with us as, as well on that. Um, I couldn't make out the question that you, that you posed, um, Lenny, but I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions if anyone has any. I know that you all have been uh, pretty tuned in to the Atlantic Avenue rezoning process. And so there will be some announcements coming up soon. We're finalizing the schedule with WXY. Um, we were on some, some calls this afternoon. So we'll be getting some information about when those meeting, those public meetings will be starting more than likely next month. And so you all will be hearing for, from us soon about that, that rollout. So um, if y'all don't have any questions, I'm happy to answer them, but those are just my, my quick community updates. So thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the support and um, participation. I'm gonna call next on uh, Daniel Abramson from the Oakland Borough President's Office. Sorry, can you actually uh, pass me? Okay, I'm not coming back. John Watkins, floor is yours from the district attorney's office. Yes, good evening, everyone. Uh, and uh, first of all, uh, DA Gonzalez sends his uh, well wishes and also uh, wishes everyone a very safe and, uh, and happy Thanksgiving uh, in a couple of weeks. And uh, for everyone to just uh, remember uh, people in the community who might uh, not be as well off uh, and to assist in whatever way you can. Uh, first of all, just as I always highlight are some of the things from the DA's uh, website, in particular, uh, the press releases. And I do encourage people to, you know, uh, people are very busy, but when you can to go to our website uh, and to click on a number of the tabs, but especially the news tabs and the press releases tabs, because there you will find all of the hard work that the DA's office, DA Gonzalez and all of his over 600 ADAs are doing each and every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, even as we speak. And uh, those include prosecutions of uh, multiple persons uh, charged with vehicular deaths and uh, injuries that occurred uh, last month and uh, persons charged uh, with, uh, with murder and, and some horrendous things, uh, including shootings and of, a, of a TSA worker recently. Uh, so please go to our website and, and look at that information and you can see you know, the, all the hard work that the DA's office is doing. Uh, the DA is also cracking down on hate motivated uh, violence, uh, hate, so-called hate crimes. And, uh, and so that's something that has been spiking uh, on and off uh, pretty consistently. And, uh, but uh, the DA and uh, his hate crimes uh, unit are vigilant about that. Uh, occasionally it changes from you know, the Asian community to the, to the you know, Hasidic Jewish community and so forth, uh, as well as African Americans and, and, and women in particular. So uh, that's work that the DA's office is constantly uh, going, is doing. Last week, the DA was interviewed on Cirrus uh, XM radio on the Laurie Daniels Flanders uh, program. And that interview can be heard if you go to Cirrus XM uh, and, uh, you know, and, and you do a search for uh, DA Eric Gonzalez. Lastly, uh, on the 15th of November, uh, the DA is hosting a homeowners and tenants resource fair. And that's gonna be at Restoration Plaza in, uh, in, in Brooklyn. And it starts at uh, six o'clock PM. There's no RSVP necessary. So you can just show up. There'll be plenty of people there on hand to meet with you and to address all of the various wide ranging issues of, uh, of, of, of homeowners and, 
and housing and tenants. That's all I have for right now. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thank you, John. It's always a pleasure to have you represent the district attorney's office. Uh, let me go back to um, Daniel uh, from the Brooklyn Borough President's Office. Thanks so much and, and apologies for the delay. Uh, just a few quick updates and announcements. Uh, November was a busy month at Borough Hall. Uh, we were handing out, uh, we are handing out 500 born in Brooklyn baby boxes to new parents in Brooklyn. Uh, the baby boxes come uh, as diaper bags with baby friendly supplies selected by the Borough President's Maternal Health Task Force and were given out in uh, select city hospitals. And this was done in partnership with the Met Council, uh, America's largest Jewish organization and a grant from Borough Hall. Um, we also have a lot going on this month. If anyone needs constituent services uh, assistance, every Wednesday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., uh, you can come into Borough Hall and every Thursday we'll be at Brooklyn Central uh, Library. Um, also exciting news, community board application season uh, is coming up and begins on 11-15. Uh, um, so that's really exciting. Uh, and November 15th through February 14th, Brooklynites age 16 and up can apply as well to serve on community boards. Uh, and friendly reminder, please follow us at BKBP Reynoso on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and subscribe online to our newsletter through our website. Um, and I'll put my contact info in the chat if anyone wants to follow up with any particular questions or needs assistance. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate you participating. Be safe out there. Thank you. Um, next, I'm going to call on uh, Allison from Assembly Member Joanne Simon's office. I know she she represented herself, but Allison, you may have some additional information you want to share. Hi, good evening, everyone. Hi. Um, I do have some additional things to share. Um, I really want to plug that we still have appointments available for our mammogram van that's going to be parked outside of our district office next Friday, November 18th. We still have um, a few slots left between 2.30 and 4.30 p.m. I'll put uh, my contact information in the chat again if you would like to uh, make an appointment. And please you know, spread the word to anybody you know who might want to make an appointment. And then I will also remind everyone that we still have COVID tests that we're giving out in our office, and we still have lawn and leaf bags that we are giving out. So please drop by anytime during the week, 9 to 5. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, next, I'm going to call on our good friends from the Brooklyn Public Library. So there's a lot of you. I'll let you do what you normally do to introduce yourselves, but the library, the floor is yours. Hello. Hi. Can you all hear me? Yes, Rachel, we can hear you. Hi. Um, Hi. My name is Rachel Tiemann. I'm um, the manager of the Brooklyn Heights branch of the Brooklyn Public Library, and I'm here with my other colleagues, and we will all be speaking. Thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to talk, as you always do. Um, we are open for business at 286 Cadman Plaza West, the Brooklyn Heights branch. We're very excited. We've been open since June 8th. Uh, if it's your first time finding out about that um, at the meeting here today, Please come see us. The scaffolding is down. You can find us now. So come on in and say hello. Um, we are we're really excited to be there, and we've got um, a, a robust crew um, and a wonderful staff who's happy to um, help you out. Um, and so many wonderful things happening. Um, one thing I do want to highlight that is um, a system wide development is Brooklyn Public Library's uh, strategic plan uh, that we have now, and there are. Um, four strategic priorities. Um, this is called Finding Level Ground, and our strategic plan has recently been published. Um, and the four strategic priorities are uh, community connections, reestablishing neighborhood relationships and partnerships and programming after more than two years of disruptions, digital inclusion, breaking down barriers to internet-based resources, tools, and services, anti-oppression, creating a culture of anti-racism and anti-bias in all BPL locations and neighborhoods, and staff supports, ensuring that our staff have the tools, training, and support 
support that they need to thrive. Those are our four strategic priorities. Each of them contain three to four concrete objectives that we'll be tracking over the next couple of years. Uh, the plan also contains information about many high profile initiatives currently underway. And you can read all of this information on our website. I will be dropping the link into the chat. Uh, please do look that over. It's very exciting. Um, and then two things that I want to share that are on a branch level at Brooklyn Heights. Um, we have uh, two programs coming up. We have a multidisciplinary project and performance uh, November 17th at 6 p.m. called As Seen by Others and Then What Is. Um, and it, uh, is, uh, it generates contemplation around assumptions of ethnicity and race. Uh, the creator, Leslie Arlett Boyce, um, is fiscally sponsored by the New York Foundation of the Arts and New York State Council on the Arts. And several of the images that are included within the performance and the photography were taken during the period of protests at the Cadman Plaza Memorial Park Conservancy right across the street from us. And then finally, um, we have a author talk that's happening on uh, December 1st from at 6 p.m. Down these queer streets with authors James Hanahan and Jeremiah Moss. Um, and it'll be a conversation between those two authors and moderated by architectural historian and theorist Brendan Moran. And uh, they both they have two recent books, Jeremiah Moss's Sparrow City and James Hanahan's Didn't Nobody Give a Shit What Happened to Carlotta, which follows LGBTQ plus narrators as they navigate the streets of New York City. That should be pretty popular. Hope to see you all there and just come by the branch to say hello. And I'm going to pass it on to my colleagues. Uh, hello, um, I am the NLS or the manager of the Walt Whitman branch of the Brooklyn Public Library. Um, I just have a couple things on the branch level to share. Uh, we are going to have our Lifetime Arts is called Creative Aging program coming up. And uh, it is registration required. Uh, we're going to have uh, eight sessions uh, with a culminating event. It's uh, for uh, for the arts, uh, we're still trying to decide what type of arts we're doing. So after this, uh, after our talk, I'm going to send over um, a digital link for a survey and also the PDF it, so we can see what our 55 and older crowd would love to learn. Um, and on another note, we I, this has been blasted multiple times, but we're trying to uh, rejuvenate our Friends of the Library group at Walt Whitman. Um, it's an essential part of just bringing advocacy and really making our library community more alive. Um, it's been a defunct for a little while. So our information meeting is next Tuesday at six o'clock. And um, the information I believe is also posted on your site. Thank you. Hi, right, Tracy, you're next. Yeah, good evening, everyone. This is Tracy from Clinton Hill. Um, Clinton Hill is now doing Ask a Tech on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 2 to 3.30. You can call the branch at 718-398-8713 and book a one-on-one -on -one appointment with our tech. We will provide you with a laptop. You can bring your own device, and she can help you with everything from eBooks to resumes to email. We also are having our teen gaming program on Thursdays from 4 to 5 and our teen anime program on Fridays from 4 to 5.30, as well as our usual children's programs, story time on Tuesdays and Thursdays, crafts for kids under 5 on Wednesdays. And I'm excited to let you know, everyone who has a lot of books that they want to donate, um, as you know, the branches can only take them if they're having a book sale. Central will be having their winter book sale on Saturday, December 10th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. All materials will be $2 each. Please bring your own bag, cash only accepted. But you can drop off donations from now through December 9th in the Central Grand Lobby during the hours that Central is open. So this is a wonderful opportunity for you to pass on books that you no longer wish to read and and also to pick up some other books for you yourself to read for the winter. And now I'm gonna pass it over to Kat. 
Hi, good evening, everybody. Um, so good to be here with y'all and community bo uh, board too. Um, so I'll be brief. Uh, I'm Kat, I'm the managing librarian over at the Adam Street Library. We just celebrated our one year um, anniversary. We opened last year on October 12th. Um, and uh, I have to say it's been uh, really great. Um, I wanted to share that we have a number of programs happening um, in November. Um, one I'm really excited about is a new parent and expectant parent sharing circle. So we're sort of exploring more um, sharing groups, talking groups, support, not support groups, um, but opportunities for people to come together um, and support one another. Um, so this will be two dates in November, November 12th at 10.30 a.m., and uh, which is a Saturday and Monday, November 21st at 10 30 a.m. Um, so if you know anyone who's expecting um, any, you know, of any gender, any um, identification, um, please uh, uh, share it with them. Um, I also wanted to share that, uh, uh, you know, at the Brooklyn Public Library, we have uh, such a wealth of resources. Um, and one of the resources uh, is uh, preparing for US citizenship. The uh, Brooklyn Public Library offers a wide range of services. Uh, I think one of the most interesting ones is one-on-one uh, -on -one legal help. Um, so folks can actually book an appointment to talk with uh, somebody who can provide legal assistance to people who are, um, you know, looking at immigration, looking at becoming a U.S. citizen. Um, and to do that, we have a number and an email. Um, the phone number is 718 230 -20 zero seven um, and the email is immigrant services at bklyn library.org we also offer um, a number of classes groups um, and um, uh, so keep saying support groups um, yeah, sharing groups like volunteers led by professionals um, there's a wide range of opportunities um, and most of those are held online um, so please uh, you know immigrant services at bkln library.org uh, is a great uh, resource uh, to connect people with um, and that is pretty much all I have for this evening. Thank you so much as always for your time, your attention and all the great work that you do uh, for the communities you serve. So I'm your fourth librarian and your last one for the night. Thank you, good night. Thank you to the Brooklyn Public Library team. We appreciate you sincerely. Um, let me call on uh, Stacy, who's representing um, Senator Kavanaugh. Stacy. Yeah, thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yes. <laughs> okay, sorry, I lost service for a little while, but I'm back. Um, second to last meeting for me here, um, Senator Kavanaugh's district will change, so we won't have Brooklyn mm. come January 1st. So just a reminder to reach out to me, I put my info in the chat. So if there's any like issues or, you know, projects that, that might get like fall, that might fall through the cracks, just reach out. We don't want to like have anything fall through the cracks and I can help um, get all the information over to an artist's office or who, you know, whoever is taking over your district. So just, you know, don't just let it fall. Um, reach out and we'll try to make that transition really easy. Um, and then I just want to let you all know that Senator Kavanaugh is in Puerto Rico for the SOMOS conference. Um, so that's why he's not here tonight. Um, but I think that's a really great opportunity for him to participate in all the um, Latino community issues in Puerto Rico. Uh, a couple of quick announcements. Um, you know, we're trying to stay engaged. So there's the DOT BQE workshops happening. Um, there's one tomorrow for BQE North. So I know that doesn't totally affect your area, but um, tomorrow in person at 630. And also there's a flu shot event that we are hosting in Manhattan at Meltzer Towers um on wednesday next wednesday and next thursday this is more relevant to you guys we're going to be joining um, or attending shahana hanif's um the council members town hall in regards to homes where their basements have flooded because of um like over when the flash floods happen and the sewers come into the basements so that's an important town hall for homeowners or people who live in basements and we're especially interested in that because we want to help legalize. Brian uh, Kavanaugh wants to help legalize basement apartments. So it's important that basement apartments are safe, right, for everyone. And so the issue of the 
water infrastructure and the sewage infrastructure coming into people's homes is an issue we're following very closely. So um, just letting you know, I'm here until December 31st, totally, you know, will help anybody with any, anything and everything. Um, but I also wanna make that transition smooth. So reach out if you have any, any projects or issues um, that need, you know, that transition. That's it, thank you. Thank you, appreciate all the updates. Um, next, I'm gonna call on uh, Vladimir with the Department of Buildings. Yes, sorry, hold on, let me get my notes out here. So sorry about that. Hello, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Vladimir Edward. I'm the new community engagement liaison at Department of Buildings. Um, I just had a couple of things to uh, to say to address you all tonight. Uh, the first thing is that uh, the new location of the Brooklyn Borough Office, it will on Monday, November 21st, 2022, the Brooklyn Borough Office will relocate to 345 Adams Street on the third floor. Um, also, the uh, building after hours, hours will be taking place at uh, 345 Adams Street. Um, and if anybody uh, needs any further information, I will write down my email. So feel free to reach out. And uh, if you have not heard, uh, Kaz Villanchi, I'm sorry for saying the name wrong, has been appointed acting commissioner of the Department of Buildings. So he is now the commissioner of the Department of Buildings. Thank you, Vlad. Welcome. Thank you. Much appreciated to be here. Sure. I'm going to call now on um, um, Eileen from the Brooklyn Academy of Music. Or is it Ellen? I'm sorry, Ellen. It's close enough. I get a lot of, um, I was, I, I had Aileen with like many A's written on my Starbucks cup the other day. So I'll take Eileen. That's very All right. Close. So this, this isn't Starbucks. <laughs> I think I was right the first time. It's Ellen, right? Oh, Ellen, Eileen? yes. Ellen, all right, I got it soon, somewhere in that mix. Floor is yours. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. I just wanted to update you on a couple of events that we have uh, coming up at BAM this month and next month. Uh, the main thing that I'm really here to hype up that I hope to see a lot of you at with your families, uh, we have Black Panther 2 coming, opening tomorrow uh, at the BAM Harvey Theater, which is the largest uh, movie theater screen in the borough. Uh, it's a, a regular theater. It's not one of our smaller movie theaters. We're, we're moving into one of our theatrical theaters. So it's a 900 seat theater. So it's, it's going to be a really fun uh, sort of, I feel like old tiny movie palace viewing experience for a lot of people. We have a very uh, reasonable ticket price for kids, students, seniors. Uh, member price is $13 and anyone can become a member of BAM if you have an NYC ID. So please come through. Um, we're really excited to be able to show this movie. We had the first Black Panther and it was one of our most successful cinema events. Uh, so if any of you know of any community groups that would like to do um, you know, group buyouts, things like that, please uh, send them my way. I'll put my information in the chat, but it's gonna be a really um, great run. The first night's already sold out. So if you're thinking about attending, please you know, get your tickets soon for sure. And then the other two uh, fun events that we have coming up, the 30th anniversary screening of Malcolm X is gonna be taking place in our opera house on November 22nd. And we're actually doing that in partnership with the Brooklyn Borough President's Office. And I'm sure that's also gonna sell out. Uh, it should be a really great event. Uh, Spike Lee will be there in person, our neighbor. So uh, please also check that out on our website. And then finally, Angela Davis is gonna be coming. Uh, she's putting out a new version of her autobiography. So December 2nd, she'll be in conversation at BAM. Uh, she was a speaker at one of our Martin Luther King Day celebrations a few years ago. And we're really happy that she's returning on the occasion of, of this book being re-released. Uh, so I'll put my info in the chat and any questions, please send them my way. And we hope to see you at BAM soon. Great, thank you for participating. And um, just don't get shocked when you see the turnout from CB2 at the events. So thank you for that. Um, Next up, I'm gonna call on uh, Richard from the Red Cross. Good evening, Chairperson Singletary, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Richard Morrow and I'm the Greater Red Cross Community Relations Ambassador for Community Board Two. Around the country, there are presently 33 disaster relief operations. 21 are in the midsection eastern region of our country. 
all are climate change related. This week locally, we assisted 119 adults and 33 children following 51 fire disaster responses. In 2021, the Russell Sage Foundation and Brandeis University surveyed thousands of families in the US and found that 35% of full-time working families were not able to properly afford housing, food, and childcare. More than half of that 35% are people of color. 51% are Black, 30% are Hispanic, and 19% are Asian. More close to home, the April 2022 report from Poverty Tracker, entitled The State of Poverty and Disadvantage in New York City, Volume 4, found that nearly half, that's 47% of New Yorkers lived in low-income families in 2020. Low income is defined as living below twice the poverty line. I put in the chat the, uh, did I get it? Oh, I don't know how to say it. I'm sorry, I forget it. Well, uh, the stats, uh, the, the report. The USDA 2022 annual food insecurity report found food insecurity in households with children is at the highest level on record with 2.3 million unable to afford adequate nutritional food during 2021. Inadequate nutrition is known to affect children's growth and physical development, as well as their ability to thrive, play, and learn. It is imperative that we stress our elected officials that we must find solutions to correct this unprecedented and avoidable situation by creating more affordable housing, affordable health care good job training, and good paying jobs. It's in our power to do this. I remember what Bell Hooks wrote when she said, we cannot imagine what, what we cannot imagine cannot come into being. A reminder, the Red Cross virtual and in-person programs can help you and our community. Our courses are free and deal with all disaster and self-help preparedness. Please check out our website, redcross.org, for details and to view our programs. We at the Red Cross recognize and support CB2's hard work to protect and sustain your community. Have a joyous Thanksgiving holiday. Thank you, Richard. Um, so next what we'll do is I'll jump back to, I kind of did this a little out of order, but I'm happy with what I did, so I'm not worried about it. But let's go to committees of report. we we'll start with economic development and employment. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Denise Peterson. I am the co-chair to the Economic Development Employment Committee. Um, Kate uh, Gilman will be reporting out. Um, my um, The chair of the com committee is not available this evening. I'm going to defer to, to Kate. Thank you. Hey, all. Good to see everyone. Thanks, Denise. Um, just to recap our last meeting, we on the Economic Development Committee had the Atlantic Avenue Business Improvement District bid a new executive director come on board and introduce herself and ask, answer some questions and kind of give a rough um, vision for her start on the bid, although she's quite new. Her name is Kelly Carroll, so we had a really nice introduction with her. And then by way of conflict, I want to just... Um, Note that I am a new member of that Atlantic Avenue bid board, just for our record keeping. And in our meeting, we basically hosted a conversation between the Atlantic Avenue bid um, and the Department of Transportation um, with um, kind of presence and blessing by Sid by the, the Transportation Committee as well. And this was in response to the Department of Transportation's proposal to install 18 truck loading zones, TLZs on most blocks of Atlantic Avenue, going from 4th Avenue to the BQE. Thanks, Taya, that's the map on there, if you guys can see it. Um, by way of context, this is all because of essentially a council law that's gone into effect that is requiring 500 loading zones um, to be installed annually to try to mitigate delivery increases and double parking and things like that, uh, with a number going on to this proposal for Atlantic Avenue. So currently three loading zones, potentially going to 18 loading zones, according to this um, kind of draft, it's still very much in progress. 
and comes with kind of a whole host of concerns that the Atlantic Bids director brought forward, namely um, wanting a more thorough study into the avenue itself, kind of what the merchant delivery needs actually are. Um, the Department of Transportation had data essentially pulled from what looked like one or two walks down the avenue, as well as kind of crash mapper type statistics on collisions and things that happened because of double parking. But there had yet to be a merchant conversation regarding kind of when loading actually occurs for these deliveries. Um, there needs to be essentially a conversation also on permit parking and, and other concerns on that avenue. So hosted this conversation and kind of enabled a forum between the two groups. There was no vote taken no motion taken um, and both groups expressed, you know, appreciation to be in conversation and they're gonna continue that forward. So there's no action by our committee, but it uh, was good to meet the new bid uh, executive director and then kind of host a really productive conversation between the two so that a DOT kind of top-down plan didn't come into CB2 without all these merchants that the bid represents getting to, to be in good conversation. So we're hoping to be um, between us and between the transportation committee, kind of gatekeepers with making sure that continues to happen. And that is the report. And we hope Bill feels better. Thank you, Kate. No problem. Uh, and thank you, Denise. Next committee is our finance and personnel, Mr. Jordan. Thank you very much, Chair Singletary. Uh, everybody, uh, my name is Leonard Jordan and I'm the uh, chair of the finance and personnel committee. My co-chair is uh, Mr. Brandon Smith. Uh, we met on October the 27th. Um, and uh, during that meeting, we discussed uh, upcoming uh, review of resumes, determining interview guidelines and scheduling interviews, which is gonna be an ongoing conversation because we all agreed we were going to, uh, since we had already had the vote for the uh, um, uh, district manager, uh, that we need to bring the uh, office staff up to its full complement, which is a, a three positions. Um, uh, who also attended that meeting was Ms. Renee Collinmore, who I believe is the 57th Assembly District liaison. Uh, she reported she had several opportunities for members. This is kind of past, uh, you know, old information because we had met in October before Election Day. Uh, but she had opportunities for members of the community. I think she was going to get this information out to the board, uh, board office uh, for to work, uh, for the community to work at early voting as well as uh, for election day poll sites. Um, the next regularly scheduled meeting for the finance and personnel committee will be December thirteenth. Uh, the meeting after that will be January twenty sixth. However, we will be meeting, we did agree that we were gonna submit some dates that we um, uh, will be meeting uh, in order to, after the posting, the posting, we, we believe that the posting for these jobs will be sometime this month. Um, and uh, we, we will be meeting in order to set up interviews uh, for the prospective candidates for the positions that will be open. Uh, I think that's about it, and uh, I'm open for any questions. Uh, Mr. Singletary, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jordan. Next committee to report is Parks and Recreation Committee. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm Barbara Zalo Gringer, the chair of the committee. Andrew Lastowecki, who's in attendance this evening, is my co chair. We met last on October 17th. We had a presentation from Davy Ives who is the chief of staff to the Brooklyn Borough um, Commissioner for Parks. And he gave us a capital project update, which he had done uh, several months ago. So he had updates. One of the things he started out by telling us was that, reminding us that capital projects typically take three years, a year in design, a year in contract, procurement, a year in construction. Uh, which sometimes is frustrating to those of us who are eager to see these projects that. Um, that's how the city works. And he told uh, a number of the projects he gave us updates on will start in spring of 2023. And he um, outlined for us that when Parks Department says spring, they mean February to June. So it could start anytime within that framework. Uh, he was 
delighted to uh, report that Susan Smith McKinney Stewart Park uh, has opened. I think everyone there is enjoying it. Uh, there, in terms of Washington Hall Park, there are going to be replacement of the basketball courts there. Uh, if possible, they will add a handball, a handball, a handball court. Uh, the uh, comfort station in Commodore Barry Park is being reconfigured to improve ADA compliance. Uh, the, the next project there will be replacing the synthetic turf field and adding sports lighting, uh, which will increase the time that the sports field will be able to use. And by the end of um, fiscal year 2023, there will be a scope meeting to talk about the next part of the project, which is the, the large um, asphalt area and the playground. So that's exciting news. And um, those of us who've been uh, looking after Common or Barry Park are, are anxious to, to hear about that next phase. Uh, as you know, the Fort Green Park work has been ongoing in a number of phases. Um, the, uh, the Green Playground um, project is going to reconstruct the playground equipment, the Kyler Gore project, I believe the work is going to start sometime in spring uh, 2023. They will be doing pavement work, adding game tables, um, replacing the play equipment, and redoing the layout of the park there. Uh, there are a number of projects going on in Cadman Plaza. There's work ongoing now at the bathroom at the Brooklyn War Memorial. Uh, the Brooklyn War Memorial is also a center for um, the Parks Department uh, personnel. Uh, let's see. Uh, and as part of Cadman Plaza, there is a limited scope project, which has been kind of shepherded by uh, council member Ressler. And um, that is going to be redoing the synthetic turf in Cadman Plaza Park. And uh, if you were at our last meeting, I asked um, the council member at that time, um, I raised the point that there are always a lot of concerns on the parks committee about what the the um, ingredients, so to speak, are of these synthetic turfs because there's a lot of concern that there are carcinogens in them and that they flake off and that people, they, they get it on people and, and it's hard to remove them. And he assured me that they would be using appropriate materials and that he would, um, would uh, follow up on that. Uh, the Department of Environmental Protection is working on projects both at Oracle Playground and Clayson playground to reduce stormwater impact on waterways. Uh, and we again, with Davey, um, raised the issue of the, the types of synthetic turf that are, are used in these playgrounds. And he said he'd get back to us and, uh, on that issue. Our uh, next meeting is this coming Monday, and we're going to have a presentation on Anchorage Plaza. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Barbara. Next sure. committee to report is Youth Education and Cultural. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I have a question, if you don't mind. Um, go ahead. Barbara, what's, do you have an update on the actual finish date on the War Memorial? Is that sort of a, is there a certain date that that would be totally finished? No, I, I he, he didn't talk about the whole project, as I recall. Let me just check my the notes here. Um, No, he really was just focusing um, last week, I believe, just on, on the bathroom update. Thank you. Sure. Next committee to report uh, Youth Education and Cultural Affairs. Yeah, good evening uh, and thank you. Uh, we had no meeting since our last meeting when uh, we reported. Uh, I have two things to share. There will be a new high school in our district, which is very exciting. Uh, it will be, we don't quite know where it is yet, but it will be in the District 13 area near Pratt because the high school will be a collaboration between the Department of Education, Pratt, and the Bank Street School of Education, all a very uh, highly uh, renowned uh, 
higher learning institutions so that students who are currently in grade eight now uh, have the opportunity to apply for the school. It's called Design Works and it will focus on design, technology, community and advocacy, as well as uh, building strong relationships. Uh, several of the members of our committee attended an informational meeting uh, online with some of the leaders and we hope to invite them to our committee in the future to get uh, more information uh, and develop uh, further uh, communication and collaboration. Finally, the uh, Civic Engagement Commission uh, is sponsoring several online workshops for youth engagement for community boards. And this is something our committee has worked on for many years with varying success. So we're anxious to have as many people from our committee as well as other committees uh, attend this to learn more about how to recruit youth, but how to engage them in the process so that they learn from us and we learn from them and they become civic leaders in the future. Um, so thank you. Uh, that's my report for tonight. Thank you, Betty. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. Um, next item on the agenda bypassing item 10 is item 11. Is there any other board business to come before us this evening from board members? Okay, moving on to the next agenda item is community forum. This is where non-community board two members get to hear from the community. Um, and so at this time, I entertain um, comments on the community. I ask that you keep your comments to two minutes and, uh, and the floor is open for members from the community to have comments. Mr. Du? John, you're on mute. Am I still on mute? No, now you're good. Yeah. Good, good. Good evening, Community Board 2. Uh, I wanted to report on the two issues that the Transportation Committee had votes that were against the committee's recommendation to Community Board, which the Community Board ultimately approved. In these two instances of Skirmahorn Street and Willoughby Avenue, there was no environmental impact study done. In that study, you would have to reach out to the community in advance of implementing anything and ask the commu community what they thought about the impacts on the community. That did not happen with Skirmahorn Street. So tonight we heard about the community board having to ask for a study that would have revealed the results of what we are now having to ask for. And the community is disenfranchised because the environmental impact study was not done in advance. Uh, the second item, uh, Chair Singletary, that I wanted to uh, raise tonight is that for Willoughby Avenue, the recommendations that Community Board 2 made were only partially accepted. What DOT did not accept was the relaxation of the open streets for 12 hours between 8 p.m. and 8 a.m. every day. We don't know why the agency did not accept the Community Board and the community's recommendation. Is it possible that the elected officials and the community board can come together and require that the agencies that are denying the community board's request provide the community board with an explanation why the community board and the community's request was not accommodated? That's it for tonight. Yeah, John, that's a reasonable request. We can definitely um, work with the council member's office and quite frankly, even, even Borough Hall and see what we can get in, in terms of an explanation. We can do that. Um, next hand I see is uh, Ramona from 1125. 
Good evening, everyone, and thanks for taking my question. Uh, when Mr. Gordon was giving his presentation, there was a term used that I'm not familiar with, and I'm thinking it might be an acronym, acronym for something, and it sounded like Eurla or URL. Okay, uh, what is? So, yes, I, I just want to know what is that. Yeah. Thank you. So Eulip is a acronym for a very popular language that goes on in, in community boards in particular, but it stands for Uniform Land Use Review Process. Uniform Land Use Process. Oh, Review, okay. Thank Review you. Yeah. Good night, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you can talk all, you can ask questions all the time if they're that easy. We, we, we welcome them. But, but in all seriousness, I applaud you because there are things that we may fly around that's familiar to us but may not be familiar to the community. So I applaud you for asking that question. I'd rather you be informed than to not be informed. So thank you for that. I really mean that. Um, any other questions or comments from the community? So according to my item, the next thing I have is uh, adjournment. But before I ask for that, a couple of things I wanna highlight. Um, I'm looking for volunteers, community board members, to sit on the borough board um, committee. So it, what happens is at Borough Hall, there are items that are brought before the borough board and it's representation from all of the community boards within Brooklyn. Um, we now have a void and need a new representative. And so in situations like this, I'm reluctant to appoint people. I usually like to ask for volunteers. So if there's anyone interested who's a member of community board too, I'd ask that you reach out to the board office, send us an email. We'll walk you through what the requirements are. And if you have interest and have time, we'd love to have uh, a representative. So we're back at the table with regard to that item. Second thing I wanna mention is that while we now thankfully have a district manager, the reality is it's still 80% of one person and 20% of another. So we're not back to business as usual. So as chairs and co-chairs, um, I ask that you continue to do the excellent work that you've had, that you've done to lead your committees, set your agendas, all those things that you've done. And then as we continue to get up to full complement, we'll be in a position to get back to business as usual. But in the meantime, I just ask that you continue to indulge um, us as we work through staffing issues before we get back to full complement. So with that, um, as always, thank you. And I'll entertain the motion to adjourn. So Second, everyone get home safe. Happy Thanksgiving and uh, have a great evening. Same to you, happy Thanksgiving. All. Thank you. Thank you, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving. everybody. Enjoy thank the you. holiday. <laughs>